We'll start our quick overview of each of these systems by talking about the low pressure fuel system. It's going to come out of the tank, go to the horizontal fuel conditioning module, looks like the one we had with 6.0. There's some changes in it that are minor and come up to our high pressure fuel rail after we filter it and regulate it in a secondary fuel filter. The high pressure fuel pump is located back just where our oil pressure, high pressure oil pump is located. Here are our high pressure feed lines coming out of our fuel pump. Here's our high pressure fuel pump we've cut away. It's down in the engine there, right where it was for the high pressure oil pump. The difference now, we're controlling up to 29,000 PSI of fuel pressure coming out, going over to the two sides, going to our different sets. So we've got high pressure lines, even the high pressure lines we've got to talk about. The leaks we had with the tubes and stuff on the 6.0 are gone. That's the good news. So there's some good news, bad news. Some of the problems we've had are fixed. Here's what our high pressure system looks like. We're going to come out of here, out of our fuel pump, with a regulated fuel pressure. The pressure is going to be determined by the PCM. And we're going to talk about how we control that pressure. Then it's going out to common rails and go to the two sides of the engine. We're going to use our piezoelectric injectors. So here's our piezoelectric injectors. They can operate much faster than the older solenoid type like was used by other manufacturers. So look at the plumbing here. Much cleaner, much neater, and look, it'll work, I promise you, much better. So let's get the fuel from the tank. It's going to come from the tank, horizontal fuel control module, to the secondary fuel filter. We're regulated, going to the high pressure pump. We're again regulated and control it to get our high pressure. Then we go to the individual fuel rails with our high pressure ranging from a minimum of 3,100 to a maximum of 29,000. We'll talk about that, and then we're going to talk about the injectors. They're special, so we're going to spend a lot of time talking about them. And we'll talk about the fuel cooler, which is not much to a fuel cooler. It's a fuel cooler. So these are the things we'll be talking about in details as we go from this and start talking about. thing to remind you of, what we're dealing with now is very much what we're dealing with on the 6.7. A lot of these systems stay the same except for the turbos. So let's get started and go look at the individual systems and get to our details like we did before. Once we talk about it, some of these systems, we won't have to talk about them again. We have things like a fuel cooler here. We had an oil cooler before. That's a big change. Other changes would be much more subtle and hardly noticeable until you look at the details. We're going to be cooling fuel instead of oil. It's up here where we can see it, not buried down in the sump somewhere. So that's one of our first changes. As we get into a look at the overview, there's some things that look the same. Coming out of the fuel tank, going to our horizontal fuel conditioning module, everything looks very much the same. Fuel is drawn from the tank into the horizontal fuel conditioning module by a fuel pump. It's filtered through a 10 micron filter. It has the recirculation and all the other systems we had with 6.0. So at the horizontal conditioning fuel module, not a lot's changed. What changes is when we get up to where somewhere else is, we're going to be up by our secondary fuel filter. Now, it looks just like our secondary fuel filter we had before. It's a 4 micron. The difference is it has a bypass uh, regulator. The pressure is regulated to 3 PSI. Excess fuel is returned back to the horizontal fuel conditioning module. This works almost the same as we had before, but in the horizontal fuel conditioning module, we were worried about getting 70 pounds no less than 45. Here, we just need three pounds. We don't need a lot of pressure. So what we're doing is looking to make sure we adequate supply and we have all the same rules to look for the cleanliness, look for dirt and contamination, and fix any problems we had with the horizontal fuel conditioning module before we go far. Because from here, we need good, good, good clean fuel. Can't say that enough times. 